A corpse trafficking scandal in China has reminded everyone that Chinese people are being exploited in death as well as in life. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Before I begin, I've been making a push to get China Uncensored to 2 million subscribers by the end of the year. When I started a few weeks ago, we needed 40,000 subscribers. Now it's down to just 10,000 more. So if you're watching and you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, remember, make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. So on with the show. People in China have been losing faith in the Chinese system. Why? Well, how much time do you have? A comprehensive study covering the last two decades reveals that Chinese people are increasingly attributing a lack of success to unequal opportunities and an unfair economic system. At the same time, achieving success is increasingly being attributed to connections and a rich family. But while more Chinese people are doubting that hard work is the key to success, China's elites are pushing them to work harder than ever before. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has been calling on Chinese people to struggle and told them to embrace hardship, which is convenient since he's giving them so much of it. From China's leading industries, there's been similar rhetoric. In April, the CEO of one of China's leading car companies openly talked about his own employees suffering through COVID infections and missing the births of their children because they had to work on the company's new car model. And in May, this exec at Chinese tech giant Baidu said in several videos that her employees should not expect weekends off. They should have their phones turned on 24 hours a day. And if they complained about her, she would make sure they wouldn't get another job in the industry again. Which sounds more like a favor than a threat after how they're being treated. Cyanide taste tester sounds like a more fun career path than this. So with many Chinese people facing high demands with a sense of diminishing rewards, they've begun describing themselves as part of a distinct social class called huminers. It sounds better in Chinese. The term first appeared on Chinese social media at the beginning of last year, and it quickly caught on. In the original post, a humineral was described as a person who is a resource, not a protagonist. You are a means, not an end. Your life's work will go towards the fulfillment of others instead of the pursuit of your own desires. Kind of like the humans in those pods in the Matrix, except the robots actually let those people sleep. A humineral is essentially someone who is relentlessly exploited by society until they're eventually discarded on the refuse pile. But honestly, I don't think it's right to portray today's China as a place where hardworking Chinese people are just systematically mined for their resources until they die, because the mining continues even after they die. A Beijing lawyer revealed exactly that earlier this month when he exposed the details of a large-scale illicit corpse trading network being investigated by the authorities. The case revolves around 75 suspects affiliated with hospitals, funeral homes, and crematoriums across at least seven different provinces that were involved in the selling of corpses to a company called Shanxi Osteorad. I'd like to tell you this company's primary business is making super, super realistic Halloween decorations because that would somehow make the story less dark. But no, reportedly the company forged body donation registration forms and other documents to illegally purchase 4,000 bodies between 2015 and 2023. The company specializes in the production and supply of bone graft products. And it used the purchased corpses to produce allogeneic bone implant materials, which it would then sell back to hospitals. Due to high demand for and limited supply of these materials, Osteorad was able to use the corpse purchasing to place itself in the center of a very lucrative business, which is why the company reportedly has been willing to pay upwards of $3,000 per body. So to anyone who says human life isn't valued in China, that's not true. It's 3K a pop. Understandably, when all this became public knowledge, the reactions were less positive than they were for that Australian breakdancer. 
The Beijing lawyer that went public with the case wrote that, I've been a criminal lawyer for many years and have handled all kinds of cases, but this is the first time for me to be so shocked and angry. Some called out the general manager at Asiorad, Li Baoxing, saying that the entire scandal is a horror film with Li being the director, which I guess makes the CCP the producers. Not sure who the grip and best boy would be in this analogy. For others, though, the fate of the trafficked corpses seem an unsurprising end for the bodies of Chinese humiterals, with one writing that, we're humiterals while alive and raw materials when we're dead. This is the fate of the Chinese people. Another posted that the living are treated like replaceable cogs and the dead are treated like replacement parts. This is the awful reality of the 21st century. Of course, none of this content about the corpse trading scandal was accessible or visible for very long. Instead, news stories and online comments were subjected to heavy censorship and quickly scrubbed from the Chinese internet. The story got buried, unlike these corpses. The Beijing lawyer, Yi Shenghua, who was reportedly ousted as director of the law firm he founded, likely at the behest of the Beijing authorities in retaliation for his whistleblowing. And while the scandal was quickly disappearing from hot topic lists on Chinese social media, a story about 190 mishandled corpses by a funeral parlor in Colorado from last year suddenly began going viral. Can confirm the CCP is in possession of weapons of mass distraction. This was seen as a cheap ploy by many social media users, though, with one writing, why are they suppressing this hot search topic? Do they think the public is stupid? What? No, they don't think you're stupid. They think you've got a big brain, a big, valuable brain that can earn them a lot of cash as soon as you quit using your breathing holes. Others noted that the U.S. case at least ended in a payout by the funeral parlor. While it's still unclear what sort of compensation will go to the loved ones of the 4,000 exploited corpses in the Osteorad scandal, if any. It might seem strange that censors launch such a heavy crackdown regarding a scandal where the public and the state appear to be aligned given that the authorities were already investigating. But actually, it's quite common for the topic of mass exploitation of Chinese people by Chinese actors to be swiftly removed from social media. The word humiterals, for example, or ren kuang in Chinese, is itself subject to heavy censorship on the Chinese internet probably because the most frequent exploiters of the Chinese people throughout modern history are the masters of the censorship apparatus, the Chinese Communist Party. I'm pretty sure the only reason the CCP doesn't turn its people into soil and green is because they don't enjoy the flavor. Just 20 years into the CCP's rule over China, upwards of tens of millions of Chinese people had lost their lives to the party's mission of creating a great socialist society under their dominion. Which, if you're keeping score, is a bad start. Even today, when Xi Jinping talks about Chinese people having to struggle and endure hardship, he's not encouraging them to do so in order to pursue their own goals or attain their own dreams but to fulfill Xi's vision of achieving the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And it's not just Chinese companies that have tried to take advantage of Chinese bodies, either. Xi's vision requires Chinese people to have more children, and Xi has been pushing hard for them to procreate, essentially saying that women should stay home and have kids. Mind you, this is the same government that not too long ago had a strict one-child policy. But women, should only have children in the way that the party state wants them to. Just this month, a Chinese woman named Xu Zhaozhao lost her final appeal in the Chinese judicial system in a long battle for the right to freeze her own eggs. The court ruled that Xu's rights had not been violated back in 2018 when a Beijing hospital refused to allow Xu, a single woman, to have her eggs frozen, arguing that a delayed pregnancy or single motherhood may lead to social problems. Ah, yes, because single mothers are the real issue in China. Everyone knows COVID, the Uyghur genocide, and rampant suppression of dissidents is all caused by roaming packs of evil single mothers. Speaking of the Uyghurs, meanwhile, in the region of Xinjiang, the Chinese authorities' control over people's bodies has reached a whole different level. In Xinjiang, they have coerced members of the Uyghur ethnic group into getting contraception made them get abortions, 
and even subjected them to forced sterilization. How could those evil single mothers do this? Unfortunately, Chinese authorities taking absolute control of the bodies of the country's minorities is not a new story. For decades, the Chinese state has been persecuting members of Falun Gong, a spiritual movement that emerged in China in the early 1990s. The persecution included the usual party state stuff like Falun Gong believers being abducted, tortured, and killed. But perhaps even more sinister than that, evidence that began emerging in the 2000s indicated that imprisoned Falun Gong members were being harvested for their organs and were even being executed for that very purpose. Earlier this month, a Falun Gong practitioner named Cheng Pei Ming recounted to the US magazine The Diplomat how he was subjected to forced organ harvesting while imprisoned in China. The night before a scheduled surgery, Cheng was fortunately able to escape, and in 2020 he made it to the US. Which is great to hear that some good things actually came to the US from China in 2020. In the US, he underwent a series of medical tests that confirmed his worst fears. Segments of his liver and a portion of his left lung had been surgically removed. The Uyghurs are just the latest organ bank for the Chinese regime. So given what's been happening in China in the past decades, it makes sense why some Chinese people weren't shocked when they heard about the Asiorad corpse trafficking scandal, but instead shrugged it off as the logical fate of China's humerals. Because China's least abundant export is hope. Asiorad corpse abuse happened in an environment where Chinese people from all over China are being exploited as humerals in all sorts of ways all the time, and not just metaphorically. Much worse crimes have been committed against the living in China, and on a much grander scale than what Osteorad did to those 4,000 corpses. And that is the truly shocking part of the story, that a large-scale corpse trafficking scandal in China really isn't that shocking. Of course, the CCP hates when I tell you about what's really going on inside China. That's among the many reasons Chinese state-run media has called China Uncensored disgraceful anti-China garbage. But I can't make the show without your support. We barely get anything from YouTube ad revenue. Most of the budget comes from viewers like you on the crowdfunding website patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You can contribute however much you want, but you could even do a dollar an episode. You can even set a monthly limit so you could be supporting China Uncensored for just a dollar a month. And as a thank you, I'll answer your questions at the end of these episodes. And today's comes from Mervyn. After the CCP collapses, do you think that simplified Chinese can be changed back to traditional Chinese? Great question. So the Chinese Communist Party created a simplified system of writing Chinese characters. It said to reduce illiteracy. But guess what? Hong Kong and Taiwan use the traditional character writing system, and they have literacy rates that rival or surpass mainland China. The reality of the simplified writing system is that it was a form of communist thought control, a way to damage and erase Chinese history and culture, very similar to how the party in 1984 tried to change language. Here's an example. This is the traditional character for love, and this is the simplified character for love. As you can see, it removed this part. That is the character for heart. So the CCP literally took the heart out of love. They really love harvesting organs. So when the CCP collapses, I'm sure there will be a renewed interest in getting back to traditional Chinese characters. But right now, there are around a billion people using simplified Chinese, so I don't imagine that change will happen quickly. Thanks for your question and your support, Mervyn. Thank you for I have another really important video I want to show you about how the Chinese-made game Black Myth Wukong is becoming a massive propaganda victory for the Chinese Communist Party. Just click here. And click that orange button to join me on Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.